Hi developers, I'm Hossam Delay, software engineer. In this Lightboard session, I'll give you an overview of the most useful Kubernetes objects. Things like the deployment, the services, config maps and secrets, and the persistent volumes. We'll take the use case of a web application that connects to a database, and we'll try to map this application into Kubernetes uh, objects. We'll have different problems when we try to map this application. First of all, to save the connection string which contains the database login and password which is considered as sensitive data we need to use a key value a secret management tool inside kubernetes and then in order to deploy the database file this file should not live inside the container itself but it should live inside a persistent volume so let's start here with um, our app so here, here we say we have a web app that wants to connect to the database so we'll have a web app that lives inside a docker uh, container and here let's say this is the container for my uh, web application so this is my container for the web app let's say here this is the the web tier for my web app this container will be deployed into Kubernetes using the YAML configuration files. We can do this also f f by using the CLI tool or the Kubernetes dashboard, but the, um, the best way to do it is through using those YAML configuration files. So we'll have a YAML file for this uh, web deployment. So let's call this web deploy. This is a YAML file this one contains the configuration for this container so let's see here and the configuration here will include things like the image and here we include the path for the image living inside a container registry like docker hub or azure container registry so let's say here this is gonna be my uh, space for the app then slash web 1.0 for example through using the kubectl command we'll use kubectl apply minus f the name of my yaml file in order to deploy this uh, file into kubernetes and then kubernetes will read that file and will create the container uh, for my web application in kubernetes architecture this container will be mapped in into a pod so Kubernetes sees pod, but not containers. So if you have multiple containers running this web instance, then we'll have multiple or we'll have a one pod running all those containers. And actually we can deploy um, one container per pod, or we can also deploy multiple containers per pod. We'll have similar to this architecture in the, in the database side. So for the database, we need to run a container run to run the uh, database so let's say this is the uh, container for my uh, database container db and this container db have its configuration written into a yaml configuration file so as we have web deploy.yaml we'll have here deploy or db deploy.yaml This one, of course, describes the configuration for this container. So it's a YAML file. And here it has the same configuration like the uh, from where to get the image. So if, if this uses uh, Oracle or SQL Server or MySQL um, instance, then it should include and the image here it should include the path to get that image from the container uh, registry so let's say here for example i'm using the microsoft uh, sql server so this should be microsoft slash ms sql and then the version 2016 for example and again this web de this db deploy yaml will be deployed into kubernetes cluster using the cube ctl so from here let's say i want to deploy that here so then kubernetes will create this container for me 
Now I want my web app to connect to my database. So how can we do that? We know that each pod in Kubernetes have an IP address. So this one will have its own uh, IP address. So let's say here uh, this um, will have its own IP address and the same for the database. It will have its own internal IP address. Kubernetes manages that actually. So we can say to the, data to the web app that the database lives inside this IP address because here we have this thing called a uh, connection uh, string which should know where, where, what is the IP address for my uh, database container. But using this IP address to reference the container database is not a good idea. Why? Because this container might um, might crash and it might be rescheduled to to run from another virtual machine. And in that case, this IP address will change. It's not a static IP address. And imagine also if you have multiple uh, containers running the database, then we'll have multiple IP addresses. And from here, we don't want to manage that. So instead of using this uh, IP address, the static IP address, we, uh, Kubernetes introduces the notion of service. So what is a service? A service is an abstraction of the, um, of the connection layer for a container. The service is that abstraction that have the responsibility of finding the different pods in order to connect to it. So let's say here and this, uh, at this stage I have a service for my database. So let's call this the DB service. The DB service by using the service discovery will, dis will discover all the uh, pods running my database and the same for my web app. So here it knows uh, which are the IP addresses for my container. We'll see how this works uh, in a few seconds. So it can reference my container DB. So we'll have a DB service for the container DB. This one could be used by my uh, container uh, web app. And the same for my container web app, I have another service. Let's say this is the web service. And it knows how to find uh, this uh, container IP address. So now if I want to connect my web app, to this container DB, I don't need to uh, use the uh, static IP address in the connection string, but instead of that, I'll use the uh, service name for the container database. This means instead of saying the IP here, I'll use the DB service. And through using uh, service discovery and the DNS names, those one will be resolved to get the uh, IP address for the right container DB. So here, those uh, to connect the web app to the database, it's actually the connection will be done at the service layer. So from here, we'll have the service talking to the database service. Now, in order to create a service, we need to go through the YAML configuration files. So we have a specific object called service. So here, let's define that object into webservice.yaml. This is a YAML configuration file. This one contains uh, instructions that enables the service to find the container. How this works? To be able to find the referenced containers, the container itself should add something here in its YAML uh, deployment, which is the labels. Here it will say, for example, this label is for the web app. So it will say here, it will use this label app. This label will be used by the servers in order to find all the deployments or all the pods running my web app. So from the web service.yaml here, it this will use a selector to look for anything up. So 
if I say selector app, then here this service will uh, look inside the Kubernetes cluster for anything that have the labels app. It will find that there is lots of multiple uh, containers or pods running uh, this um, uh, web uh, application, then it will reference all of those. If there is only one pod running uh, the, um, the web app, then it will just reference it. If we have multiple ones, then the service will perform load balancing. So at first connection, it will connect to the first pod, second connection, it will connect to the second one, and so on. It will perform load balancing between uh, all of the uh, containers or pods running uh, the web app tier. The deployment of the web service is similar to deploying the deployment. It's just using the kubectl apply minus f web service dot yaml and this will create uh, the uh, web service the same thing apply here for the database container so we'll have a db service dot yaml this is a yaml configuration file that will uh, use the same the uh, selector and here we'll use the db for example and uh, in order to find everything db then in the deployment this should use the uh, label db in order to be retrieved by this service and map it into it so anything any service or any pod that wants to connect to another pod or to get connections from other pods should use the uh, service is the way how um, and uh, kubernetes objects talks to each other so now at this stage my web app can talk to my database but as we said here for my web app it will use this connection string and from here it will reference the db service but the connection string contains also some other sensitive data like the login and password for my database this is sensitive data, we don't need to uh, put that inside the container or inside the application source code. And for this problem, we have a solution on Kubernetes. Here, where Kubernetes introduced the thing called a uh, config map. But config map is actually for uh, saving key values inside Kubernetes as plain text. But for sensitive data, like here we have the secret, we have a specific uh, object for that, which is the secret. The secret will just take the uh, key value for my connection string and it will try to encode it in uh, base64. This is not that uh, much secure. It's just hiding the, uh, it's just um, encoding the value. For that, it's better to use uh, some other uh, more advanced um, key value, key value uh, secret services like Azure uh, Key Vault or HCorp uh, Vault. Those will try to um, securely save your uh, secret uh, data. The config map and the secret are, of course, YAML uh, configuration files. So we can write those configuration into those uh, different uh, files. And inside this configuration, we'll it defines those as key values. So we'll say here we'll have a key value for my connection string, for example. The value then will contain the name for my DB service. So let's say here um, DB service. Then maybe we have a login and a password that we need to save securely so this is going to be the content for the uh, yaml configuration file this one could be deployed into kubernetes using the kubectl apply minus f the name for this uh, yaml file and then my app could read that value from this secret file how this could be done actually here from the web deploy.yaml we can add some other configurations to read environment variables so at first we'll define environment variables for my container and we'll read it in order to pass the content for this uh, connection string to my application 
and the environment variable will read this uh, its value from this secret so for that here we have something called a secret key ref which can reference the config map and read the uh, key values defined right here so from then here we can say the key is the con string so then the deployment file will expose this um, key value or this connection string defined inside the secret it will expose it as environment variable for my container and if we use Azure Key Vault or Ashicorp Vault, then we have a specific syntax for how to read those values from those um, uh, stores that might not be living inside our Kubernetes cluster. So Kubernetes supports those, case, uh, those type of scenarios using its uh, cloud manager uh, component. Now for the database, if we keep this uh, configuration this means the database will be the database file will be created inside the container database this means here i'll have a db uh, file living inside the container but this is not a good practice why again for the nature of kubernetes because if this container crashes or gets rescheduled to run on another uh, virtual machine then i lose this container with that i lose my database this is not a good thing to happen in my application and production so instead of running or instead of saving my database file inside this uh, container i'll go to save it inside a disk because at the end those containers will run inside virtual machines and inside those virtual machines i have uh, disks so i can attach attach disks to these virtual machines in addition to that i can attach disks that lives in the cloud using for example in azure we have the uh, azure uh, disks those disks have high availability they use uh, backups uh, they have a high sla so i'm pretty sure that my database will not uh, get lost so I remove my database from inside the container to leave inside uh, a disk. How can I do that? Here, where we introduce, where Kubernetes introduces the persistent volume. Through using persistent volume, we can attach disks to our pods. So let's say here, I will go to remove or go to move the database to another file. This one will be called the uh, persistent volume. And again, it's a YAML configuration file. This contains the configuration for the uh, disk. The configuration here is like the uh, capacity for that disk. Let's say here, for example, five gigabytes. And then um, the storage class. Here, for example, I can say this, I, I should get my disk from Azure uh, using the Azure uh, disk service. If I'm hosting my Kubernetes inside uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud using the AKS service, Azure Kubernetes service. For other cloud providers like Amazon Web Services or uh, GCP, they have also their own uh, managed uh, disk services and with it they ha they implemented their own uh, Kubernetes API in order to provision and connect those uh, disks to the Kubernetes cluster. To get more of my content, you can connect with me at uh, Twitter. My Twitter handler is Hossam Delay. Thank you and have a nice day.